even though the actions that I'm talking about are traditionally understood and most of them um, were defined many years ago, hundreds of years ago, there are a couple of new actions um, which herbalists are now using quite widely, but this is, these are actions which are, would have been unknown um, to the eclectics. The properties might have been known, um, but the actual word wouldn't. And the best example of that is adaptogens. The word adaptogen was, um, was coined by Professor Breckman um, in Vladivostok in 1964. Very specific uh, research, nothing really to do with traditional herbalism. And it's, it's got a very specific meaning that um, is starting to be lost, unfortunately, because that meaning is really useful. Adaptogens are, by definition, safe, gentle herbs. That's really crucial. Um, that help the body cope with what's called non-specific stress. They have an impact on the way the adrenals respond in the general adaptation syndrome. So adaptogens, very specifically, enable us to cope and endure stress longer. Now, the, the biological function of that is so that you can change whatever the stressor is. Um, the adaptogens help you, you know, the old idea about stress, you're in a field with a bull and you've got to run away. You know, that's the stress. In that situation, adaptogens would help you see the bull quicker and get out faster. Um, but when you got out, you'd still be adrenalized and exhausted. But they don't get rid of stress. Stress is an adaptive, beneficial thing for human beings. It's just that we live in that space most of the time, and it's very debilitating and, and really quite dangerous, as is, is really well understood. What Breckman and his group actually discovered was um, the way in which the saponins and triterpenes from this plant and uh, a close relative, which is the Panax ginseng plant, um, specifically changed the way metabolic activity was happening um, in response to stress. It's a place where um, we know what chemistry is doing what. And I'm really glad that the pharmaceutical industry hasn't decided to go for isolated products, um, probably because it's a bit, a bit too challenging to uh, synthesize them. But with Siberian ginseng, the Panax ginseng, the North American and, and Korean ginseng, and a few other species, uh, nature has given us some really wonderful remedies which help us survive in the face of, of modern stressful life. The danger with them is that we use them to carry on going rather than changing the, the stressful situation. Um, I suppose what I'm saying is the danger is yuppie use of adaptogens to work longer, work harder, keep going to achieve and achieve and achieve. So you can keep the stress dangers at bay for a certain amount of time with adaptogens, but only for a certain amount. When, when you reach the limits of what the adrenals can really cope with, exhaustion is still going to happen. So they're wonderful things, but they're not the miracle cures that a lot of the product pushes say. There's one other thing about the word. I've seen some definitions which, from my reading of the research, are entirely wrong. Um, adaptogens are not herbs which work on hormones. They work on a particular group. They work on the stress-related hormones. So herbs which work on um, thyroid hormones or sex hormones or any of the other hormones um, shouldn't be called adaptogens. Adaptogens are simply, not simply, specifically to do with um, coping with the general adaptation syndrome. And the broader we make the, de the definition, the much more difficult it is for the clinician to know what to do. My favorite adaptogen um, 
which may be a reflection of the, the fact that it works well with me, is this plant, Siberian ginseng. Um, with Panax ginseng, you can get an overstimulation. And in women, that can be really uncomfortable. It can probably ca often cause a headache. In men, it can be too pleasant. Uh, bodybuilders, um, should I say this, jocks, um, who tend to get off on being pumped up, can use ginseng to um, duplicate that sensation of being pumped up. Um, I think that's a complete abuse of the plant, but then I think bodybuilding is an abuse of the body, but we'll leave that one alone. There, you, you could get into saying that there are certain conditions and maybe certain body types you wouldn't, one shouldn't use a lithococcus Siberian ginseng with, but um, I've used it with many different people, many different body types, and the only time I would stop using it is if the person developed a headache, because that is characteristic of um, adaptogen saponin overstimulation. There are some adaptogens which don't contain saponins. So there's now an increasing list of them. Let, let me just name a few, and I, I'm definitely not totally up to date on this. Um, rhodiola, uh, from, actually from Lapland, is showing itself to be a, a good anti, uh, sorry, good adaptogen. However, when it was first introduced, the people introducing it made ridiculous claims. It was, you know, the miracle breakthrough, whatever. No, it's not. It's a good, useful adaptogen. Um, not better than Siberian ginseng. Different, got different properties. Um, shiitake mushrooms are adaptogenic. Reishi is adaptogenic. There really are many of them. And it may, on the surface, look like all the adaptogens come from Asia. Um, with the exception of American ginseng. But that's not true. That's simply an artifact of the research. The research on adaptogens is done by Russian, Chinese, Japanese researchers. Um, there's research on, China, on American ginseng in this country in terms of the agronomy of it, but not really in terms of its therapeutic use, and there's no looking for new North American adaptogens. Um, the Asian scientists and, and herbalists are always looking for them. So there's a long list and an increasing list of Asian plants which are adaptogenic, and not a long list of European, North American ones. doesn't mean there aren't any. It means the researchers don't get the grants. I strongly suspect, but can't prove it, that oats are adaptogenic. If you look at how the body responds and how people feel when they're using them. I think oats would be my primary candidate for um, a Northwest European adaptogen. However, to prove something's an adaptogen, you have to do all the actually rather obscene pharmacological tests. There are standard stress tests done on animals, which are, are just gross. Something is, is, is an adaptogen, if you do the standard test on the animals without the substance and, and say, right, the swimming test, you hold a rodent by the scruff of the neck in a clamp in water so it swims. It's a swim reflex and it will keep swimming because it's in water and you keep going till they die. Uh, and you do the statistics and there's X number of hours. You get a population of equivalent rodents and give them the adaptogen and do the same test and if the average length of time is longer the conclusion is the substance ad is adaptogenic because it's helped the animal cope in the stress. Now I don't want to do that to oats to prove my idea. Um, this is a place where yes I'm really intrigued by adaptogens but do we really want to be doing that sort of um, disgusting animal abuse for herbalism. So, um, adaptogens are relevant because we are living in stress. However, the treatment of stress has to be a much, much broader and deeper than just using the adaptogen. The adaptogen is a core component, 
but unless there is some approach to helping the individual get a handle on their life, um, find ways of coping with stress or so they, they change the situation, um, you won't actually help them very much. You, you're just going to get them hooked on it. Well, not hooked. You're just going to get them to be users of plants that end up being used as a way of not having to cope with their problems. They're using the substance to cope with their problems. So useful remedies, but they have to be in the context of holistic treatments.